Alright, hi guys, this is the Sickness LP, and uh, today I'm going to be giving you a quick tutorial on how to let's play a game using nothing but your computer. This isn't the way that most of the popular let's plays, like uh, let's players like Chica Conroy and stuff, do it, um, because uh, they use capture devices to capture directly from the TV, but I don't have the means to do a tutorial for that yet because I have yet to find a capture device that works, that would work for my Vista laptop. But uh, this is uh, still a common way, and uh, some other um, uh, popular Let's Players actually enjoy doing it this way. Mostly ROM hackers like, um, uh, I don't know, Proton John, for instance. Very practical, and uh, this is to play like older platform games it, uh, that are uh, harder, uh, that uh, you can't really play like Wii games like this. You'll have to use a capture card for that, but this is for older platform games that are like, um, uh, I don't know, Pokemon games or uh, um, uh, Game Boy Advance games, NES games, even N64 3D games because there are N64 emulators, but uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, you're going to need an emulator. Now there are different types of emulators you can get, I explained this in depth in the last part, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's really by choice really, you just, uh, depending on what kind of game you want to let's play, you uh, choose an emulator. I'm gonna use Anestopia as an example because it has a lot of the features that I'd like to show, and it's a very good emulator. This is for this is an NES emulator, obviously in NES Topia, but uh, you can get Game Boy Advance emulators like uh, No Cash GBA works pretty well for like uh, if you want to let's play, let's say like Pokemon Fire Red or a simple GBA game, or uh, but this will do nicely for now. And uh, you'll also need a ROM. Now, uh, I prefer to get ROMs that of games that I actually own for, like, uh, morality reasons. But, uh, you know, it's uh, up to you. If you don't mind illegally downloading things that you don't really own, then you can just get a ROM of a game you don't own. Uh, it's, uh, y you won't, like, get arrested for it, to my knowledge. I don't think anyone ever has. And it's basically only the people who actually put the ROMs on the website who get arrested for it, not the people who download them. So that's all good. And uh, so yeah, search up a site that sells ROMs. As you can see, I have the game here. This is Super Mario Bros. 1. This is what I Let's Played, and uh, this is exactly how I Let's Played it. So uh, as, uh, as for emulators, you'll have a lot of stuff that you can play around with, the video settings, whatever. You can put them full screen, but I... Am very discouraging of this because it, as you can see, it pixelates the game and distorts it even more, and uh, everything's out of proportion. So, uh, uh, so like you'll walk one space and it'll make it look like you're walking two and a half spaces, and it'll get really confusing. So, uh, you know, I prefer I I uh, personally prefer just recording it on this small screen. It gives you more of a proportion sense. And as for how you play the game, you can use joy pads or game pads. You can search them up on Amazon. I've seen cheap ones for ten dollars or more expensive ones for uh, more money. And uh, basically, what they are is they're like pads that have their own inputs. They're like uh, they're like sort of uh, control gaming controllers that uh, hook into your computer by USB. They're very practical, but sadly, I don't have one. So the games you play will be limited to games that you can play on your keyboard until you uh, decide to go all out and get to yourself one of those uh, gaming pads. But for now, I use them uh, my keyboard for I use keyboard to play like Pokemon on emulators or to play simple games, simple platformers like Super Mario Bros. When you get into like Super Mario World where you have to use up, since I use my uh, up key as A for like jumping, then it gets kind of difficult. But uh, yeah, it's basically you use your keyboard, and here you can map the keys, so to move left, you'll have to uh, move left on your keys, and I set A button to up so that up will jump, so uh, left, right, and up to jump. It's uh, That's the setup I use. Choose your own setup, like I said. After you've done all that, the next thing we're going to have to cover is recording. You're going to want to record with the... Uh, I'm using Camtasia to record this right now, and usually I use this to record my Let's Plays too, but uh, Camtasia costs money. And right now, I can't really show you an example of recording with Camtasia, because I'm already recording with Camtasia. So I'm going to show you Cam Studio. This is something I downloaded a long time ago before I was moderately good with computers. So it's a very easy setup, very easy to download, very easy to understand. 
it's got the basic buttons you can pause recording record and play whatever it's a uh, like I said very basic setup and uh, a lot of people use it because it's free and it's uh, pretty much the same good quality as uh, Camtasia I guess I just use Camtasia because I like how it's practical and it shows you all the information you can get the information with Camp Studio too you can just play around with the settings like I said before but I'm not gonna go into that as in depth with the as with the emulators so uh, basically what you're gonna want to do to record is uh, uh, here, you, some people can record with spe with the, from audio from their speakers, but my computer doesn't allow that, and I use a more universal way of doing it. But uh, if you can record audio from your speakers, you can always just say record audio from speakers, and then just open Audacity to record the commentary. That's uh, what a lot of people will do. But I'm going to show you a way you can do uh, it if your computer doesn't allow you to uh, record audio from speakers like mine because I don't have stereo mix and it's dumb because my sound card sucks but whatever I'm not gonna go into that and uh, so yeah you're basically you're gonna want to uh, re you're gonna want to go region and uh, basically you're gonna want to select the inside of the uh, emulator up to around here so this is how you're gonna record it in full screen without having to like crop it because basically now it's just uh, so now it's just recording this part of the screen so you won't get all this and you won't get that under you'll just get the game and it'll look a lot more professional so uh, I should, probably shouldn't have done that because I was going to ask you to do that but uh, yeah that's how you do it so uh, that's how we do things and uh, that's how you're going to record it but now recording the sound like I said before there are different setups to record the sound if you want to just record audio from speakers and use uh, audacity that's how a lot of people will do it but I'm going to show you a way that you can record the sound and the, th the sound of the game and your commentary using simply Camp Studio, which is a pretty good setup if you ask me. So uh, now uh, we have 80 times 86. It's uh, VAC10. This is a very useful program. I recommend it a lot for this kind of thing. And uh, once, if you uh, can't follow, if you can't exactly understand what I'm doing with this, that's okay. Just follow exactly what I did, and it'll work fine for you. But uh, if you can understand all the technical stuff going behind this, then that's good. I'll try to explain it to you. So basically, you can download this for free. It costs like 50 bucks usually, but I don't get the point because you can just download a zip file of it, and it works completely fine. So uh, I don't know if you really want to pay 50 bucks for it. That's your problem. But I just got it free. I didn't really mind in this term. So once you get it, you're going to want to click the setup or setup 64 if you have a 64-bit Windows. But uh, yeah, after you've set it up, this is going to basically set up the drivers for it. You need to do this or else it's not going to work. Next, choose the folder. I have 64-bit, so I have to go with x86. But mo most of the time, 64-bit, I mean x64 works for every computer. Even my computer works with x64, but since I have a 64-bit computer, I'm just going to take 86. Don't bother memorizing all that, that's just complex computer talk. So, uh, VCC, whatever, this is the control panel. You're going to have to open this first. And uh, all this, you should could check quickly to make sure everything on here looks exactly like it looks on mine for it to work, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Basically, all you're going to want to do is look at these driver parameters. Set the cables to 2, and then click set. All you need is 2 for this. You can set more for different stuff, I don't know, but you're going to need 2. So keep that in mind. Next, we're going to go to audio repeater. Uh, what? So basically, I'm going to try to play-by-play -play this so it makes more sense. You're gonna First, you're going to want to map your uh, line 1 to microphone. So basically, anything that's... P I mean, uh, not microphone, speakers. So anything that's playing in line 1 is going to play in your speaker, so you're going to be able to hear what's going on in line 1. No, you're not going to be able to hear your own voice, that's just annoying, and I have took that into account. So uh, Then you just press start, and once this is working, you know it's working. So uh, just keep it as that. Next, the next audio repeater, what you're going to want to do is uh, line... One, you, it, we already mapped line one to the speakers. Next, you're going to want to map line one to line two. So wave in is line one, wave out is line two. So this is going to, uh, not only is line one, everything in line one is going to play to your speakers, but it's also going to go into line two. 
This is going to make sense in a bit, just bear with me. So, uh, now that we've done this, you can just uh, minimize this, don't close it. And you can open as many audio repeaters as you want, it shouldn't really matter, they're not really resource intensive, so it shouldn't like make your computer go slow or anything. And uh, next, you're going to want to uh, map your microphone as wave in. So the microphone you're using to uh, record commentary, I'm using Connextant High Definition Microphone built-in stuff. And then you're going to want to map that to line 2. So let's recap here. Basically, it's going to play, the audio of the game is going to go into line 1. And then line 1 is going to play to your speakers so you can hear the audio of the game while it's recording. Then line 1, which has the audio of the game, is going to go to line 2, which is going to be what we're recording from, and your uh, commentary is going to go to line 2 as well. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to let you record the audio of the game and the commentary at the same time. So it's uh, very useful, in my opinion. That's what I did, and it works great. I'm very happy with it. So uh, next up, how much time we got here? 12 minutes. See, we're doing much better than we did last time. So now to set this up to record, there's only a few things left to do. Sound, you're going to want to make the sound pass to... Device will automatically by uh, default be set to your speakers. So it's going the sound is going to go uh, by default to your speakers. But uh, you're going to want the sound to go to line 1 down here. And what this is going to do is, like I told you before, the game audio is going to go to line 1. You're still going to be able to hear it because of the audio repeaters, except it's going to be going to line 1 instead of your speakers. So after you've set that up, you're good to go. And uh, just open what you're using to record. I'm going to use Camp Studio because, like I said, it's free, easy to use, and uh, a lot of people t use this to record their stuff. Now, you're going to have to keep it on record audio from microphone for this to work. Don't bother with the speakers. That doesn't work for me. You're going to want audio. You want to go to audio options and audio options for microphone. Basically, all you have to do here is set your microphone to line 2. So it should be by default your uh, microphone. You're going to want to set it to line 2 because line 2 will have both the game audio because of the repeaters and the microphone. So you're going to be able to do your commentary and listen to the game audio at the same time. So after you've done that, basically you just record and that's it. If you have it set to record audio, record audio from microphones, then it's going to record the game, the screen of the game like I showed you to do it, and it's going to record the audio at the same time. So you're going to be able to do your commentary for the Let's Play and record the audio. Very practical use. Now, uh, one thing I just want to point out quickly is you're probably going to, right here, my stuff are not at 100. These channels, you don't really have to bother, but just bother with the master right here. The master should be dumbed down a bit to like 40. I put it at 40 because if it's too high, then like the audio of the game is going to be as loud as your microphone, and it's going to be really hard to make out what you're saying or whatever. So I like keeping the audio of the game lower, so around 40, that way you have it's not really getting in the way of your commentary but you can still hear it so that's my setup this is how I did this how much time do we have left um, 14 minutes I'm gonna quickly go into save states okay save states is something that a lot of people use in this game so uh, let's see if I remember the controls let's play so uh, here's level one so basically what I have it is set up for save states so uh, up here input go to f I look at file quick load state and quick save state these are these are the defaults for the simulator this is what I like to use so basically shift 1 or shift any number will save the state to that slot and uh, sh and just the the number itself without shift is going to load it so what you what this means is uh, right here you're afraid you're gonna die so you can just abuse save states and go shift 1 and see save state to slot 1 or you can go shift 2 save state to slot 2 Basically what this will do, like uh, I, I know uh, anyone who watches Proton John knows that he uses a lot of save states. Let's say you die, then you can just press shift 1, I mean not shift 1, you can just press 1 and you'll restart, see loaded state from slot 1. So you'll just restart where you save the state. There's also like fast forward and stuff, you can play around with your emulator, learn all the techniques you can use to make your let's plays more bearable and uh, that's basically it. So. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try to make a video response to answer. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Have fun with your Let's Playing.